ask everyone, if you don't mind, to center yourselves wherever you may be. Before we begin this afternoon, I want to acknowledge that we are on the land of the Lenape and Canarsie peoples, who are the original stewards of this land. I want to call into our gathering our Black and LGBTQ plus ancestors who are no longer here, many who fell at the hands of violence. I want to honor the spirits and the souls of each and every one of you. To our Fort Greene community that came together and supported our church in our time of need. To our LAPC family who calls this place their community of faith and church home. To all of our friends and advocates of justice, good afternoon everyone and happy Pride. Beloved, we gather together here today to bless and to dedicate flags which are symbols of what this community stands for. In our faith tradition, some of you may know that we dedicate temples and churches and objects like flags because in the busyness of our days, we believe that it is important to slow down long enough to tell important stories. Today, we tell the stories of resistance and pride. You see, living in Fort Greene or across New York City, we can be lulled into believing that we are in an oasis of inclusivity. We can believe that the systemic racism and heinous heteronormativity that harms people is somewhere out there or in other states. But the truth is that the brokenness of our world shows up everywhere. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. Well, today we celebrate resistance that wants to reimagine God's creation whole. We declare theological and ontological, which just means the essence of our being and human truths, that black life matters and the beauty of God's creation is exemplified by those who are LGBTQ+. Black and queer lives are sacred. Can I say that again? Say again. Black and queer lives are sacred. 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 Holy, say that after me, holy. holy. Magnificent. Magnificent. Beautiful. Beautiful. And every time people walk by this church, they will be reminded that we took the time, you all took your resources, we continue to pour our labor into telling this truth. Y'all, we have on the back of these flags words of ancient testimony. One of them comes from a little known prophet and the other a somewhat famous church planter. But both of the messages hold the same essence. Love demands justice. Love calls us to break our silence. Love calls us to resist. Love calls us to celebrate. So welcome, beloved. May the songs that are sung today, may the words that we hear, may the dedication that we commemorate be a testament to love and all that it calls us to do. May these symbols be a rallying cry to our souls to resist injustice and celebrate the fierce, fabulous creation that God has made us to be. Welcome, welcome, welcome.
We now welcome the youth of LAPC who will sing a song written by our own Charlie Holder Foster. One more time for the youth of LAPC. We appreciate them. Charlie, thank you for that incredible song. We appreciate you. We are now going to call up a couple of leaders in our church who will walk us through the story of these flags. Let us welcome elders Kali Tuma and Peaches Diamond. Lafayette Avenue Presbyterian Church has a long and proud history of activism. Our flags and banners call attention to our core mission of social justice. When our church was founded over 164 years ago, a civil war over the expansion of slavery threatened to tear our country apart. To show our support for the Union and the Emancipation Proclamation, the Union flag was flown high from the church tower. We continued this tradition of raising flags and banners over the years. The Black Lives Matter and Pride flags represent LAPC's commitment to um, two of the most compelling social justice concerns of our era. The struggles against systematic racism and police misconduct and oppression based on sexual orientation and gender expression. 
We first affixed smaller versions of these banners on our facade after the election of 2016, when our country was witnessing a rapid escalation of violence against Black and LGBTQIA people. The ongoing violence against Black people, as well as oppression based on gender expression and sexual orientation, are issues that have plagued our nation from its conception and continue to this day. The banners were a rebuke to all who deny the humanity of the Black and LGBTQIA communities. The continued oppression and violence against Black and queer citizens intensified in the summer of 2020 with the public murders of George Floyd, Ombre Arbery, Breonna Taylor, among many others. The young people of LAPC spoke, spoke truth to power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gold ribbons with their names and ages of these and other black victims killed at the hands of police were installed in our church fence. Then, then our, our gold, gold ribbons and rainbow pride banner were destroyed in hateful acts of vandalism. vandalism. Not deterred, our youth called attention to a chalkboard installed on the church fence where members of the community could write their reflections on how to make the world a better place. During that summer, our congregants and members of the surrounding community gave generously to fund the design and creation of these new, vibrant, and permanent flags. Yeah. <laughs> The new flags will serve as a visible testimony to LAPC's stand on social justice issues. Amen. The reverse side of each flag includes scripture verses proclaiming the radical inclusiveness of our church community. The Black Lives Matter flag carries the charge from the Old Testament prophet Amos. Let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Amen. Echoed in the sermons of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and others. The bride flag carries this quotation from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love but the greatest of these is love. From 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. The eminent theologian, Reinhold Niebuhr, who preached here during World War II, wrote, quote, nothing is worth doing, nothing is worth doing can be achieved in our lifetime. Therefore, we must be saved by hope. It, it is, is in the this spirit, spirit that, that we continue, continue our struggle for and with each other. other. I want to thank Callie and Peaches for that incredible telling of our story. Can we give it up for them one more time? Sometimes it's just important to testify and tell the story. Thank you so much. Beloved, our next guest is not a stranger to Fort Greene, to New York City, the state, and even this congregation. She was and is a tireless advocate of the people of our community and has taken her fierce spirit of justice and holding those in power accountable to her office as the New York State <laughs> Attorney General. Please give it up for none other than the Honorable Letitia James. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Is Fort Greene and Clinton Hill in the, I can't say in the house, but in the neighborhood? Yay! <laughs> you know, I, 
You know, I, I love this neighborhood. I, I walk down from my home and Emmanuel Baptist Church is having a party outside. And then I kept walking and I saw love and faith and hope um, outside of the church uh, at uh, Lafayette and Clinton. And then I, yes, Cadman, and then I come here and I see all of you. There's something really special about this neighborhood. There's really something special. So for all of you who thought I moved to Albany, I didn't. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm right. I'm still here in Clinton Hill, and I'm not going anywhere. So thank you. I want to thank uh, Pastor Telford for his outstanding leadership in guiding this congregation through the loss of life and economic uncertainty and racial unrest and widespread fear of the past year. And I understand that he will be leaving us. So this is sort of a bittersweet moment for me. Um, I'm urging, I'm going to pass a law that he cannot go. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. Uh, sorry, amen. Okay, no. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> so I want to also thank the Social Justice Committee, the Circle of More Light, and the Opening Doors campaign for making today possible. This past year has challenged us in, in many ways. It has tested our faith and our belief in one another. And we have feared for our lives and we've lost our loved ones. We've changed our way of life. We've been socially isolated. We've been removed from one another. We miss touching and holding. And we've experienced social unheaval like never before in this society. But we're here. And while we are recovering from this pandemic, uh, we are still in the battle against a pandemic of prejudice and hatred and racism and violence and structural oppression. But I want all of those who remove the flags here at this church and those who defaced the statue and flatbush of George Floyd, you can't kill a revolution, a movement. You can't tear it down. It's in our souls and in our spirit. And there's nothing that you can do that can separate us or the love that we have for one another. And that we're all part of the human family and that human spirit. That's what's gonna stay alive. So you can deface our monuments and take down our flags, but you can't take down all of us. All of us stand together. All of us stand together. So in the season of both Juneteenth and Pride, ah, we know that people of color and members of the LGBTQ plus community have long felt uncertainty. They feared for their lives in their own communities and they suffered in infringements of their rights and offenses against their neighborhoods in silence. But we will no longer be silent. We stand as allies together. We stand in our own truth together. We stand together as one another, recognizing who we are and celebrating who we are, and respecting who we are, and loving one another. Because love, my friends, is love. That's all that it is, is love. And so in these circumstances, it's the leadership of this great church. This church has been in the foreground of so many movements, so many struggles. All you have to do is walk inside and look on the walls and see all of the individuals who have struggled. All you have to know is the history of this church and all that they have gone through. All that you have to know is all of the ministers who have blessed us in the pulpit and given us sermons and instilled that faith in our soul. All you have to do is look around this neighborhood and know that we, again, are one human family and nothing will separate us but the love of God. And so, in these times of moral confusion and racial upheaval, and Lord knows after these past four years, they're over. they're over, but there's thread still with us. Our faith is always there to show us the way, to lead with light and with love and to comfort us with the assurance that with God as our guide and love in our hearts, there is nothing, nothing, that can defeat us or tear us down. This church has borne this great responsibility with unshakable morals, unshakable empathy and wisdom and faith. This is why whenever our spirits are low, we walk into this church. And I've walked into this church many of occasion when my spirits were low. 
We've walked into this, uh, this wonderful church to be uplifted and to remember that all of us should walk in the light. And all of us should remember that there is a higher spirit and that regardless of who sits in the White House or who sits in Albany or who sits in City Hall, it's really all about the people and the power really lies in the people. And that I don't respect power coming from the top down, but I have always, always, as the city council member of this district, as the public advocate, and now as the attorney general, I understand that power only comes from the bottom up. The bottom up, always. And just like this church, never been afraid to speak truth to power and to stand up for the rights and privileges of those who've historically been locked out of the sunshine of opportunity. And I've never lost who I am because all of you have taught me, all of you have schooled me, all of you have educated me about this community, about what it represents, and about the love of God and about the love of one another. And that carries with me always whenever I may have to make decisions. And so today, we wave these renewed symbols the symbols of love and acceptance and respect and inclusion that have exhibited in this neighborhood, in this church, for over a century. These flags demonstrate strength in diversity and strength in unity and power, my friends, in solidarity. Power in all of us. Let us all stay together and not allow anyone to engage in these culture cancels and engage in splitting us apart and engage in these wedge issues. Let's stand together as one. These flags serve as a, a resounding reminder that your doors are always open, that this church door, these church doors are always open to the disenfranchised, to the hungry, to the poor, to the homeless, that we are not a neighborhood of nimbyism but a neighborhood that welcomes those who are disenfranchised and struggling under the weight of poverty. Yes. And all who enter, all who enter, enter into a loving family, regardless of your race or your religion or your sexual orientation, we welcome everyone. This congregation has stood historically with righteousness, and justice and this church will forever stand for the pursuit of justice and the pursuit of happiness and the pursuit of love let us teach our children let us stand with them and let them know children that you are the next generation and I want you to stand up I want you to be to be heroes and I want you to stand up against bullies and all of those who would criticize you and all of those who would focus on someone who is different. I want you to step to them and say, I'm a leader and that's wrong. And then I stand with this neighborhood and then I stand with love and truth and in the pursuit of justice. That's what you will do. God bless you and thank you. The Honorable Letitia James, everyone. Thank you so much for your presence and for your words. We appreciate you. I now invite one of our uh, leaders in our congregation, one of our deacons, Clara Freeman, who will bless us with a poem. What an act to follow. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and a triple amen. These times. Here you are, my little church my little shining brightly church. Your steeple went when subways came, but in your heart we stand, we stand. We rainbow friends of every shade, of every age, of every love. Some days we christen, some days we mourn, but always holding hands and singing singing that love will lead us through the fiercest storms. If we cannot yet walk on water, we built this boat to take us through the darkest waves. Our little church, our little bravely loving little church, we ride the waves, 
we grasp our rainbow oars and row. Clara Freeman, everyone, let's give it up for her one more time. We now have a quartet composed of incredible singers and leaders from our church that will lead us in a hymn that was composed by one of our own members for this occasion, Ed Moran. Ed, can you just wave your hand back there? Ed is a gifted hymn writer and wrote some incredible words for today. Queerly beloved, richly endowed, grace with God's favor, so prayerful and proud. Rainbows ascending, banners unfurled, rising, revealing a fabulous world. Risen, transfigured, claimed as God's choice, richly engendered, lift every voice. Risen, transfigured, claimed as God's choice, Richly engendered, lift every voice. Queerly beloved, quick to proclaim. Love so audacious, now dare speak its name. Gracious and gentle, stalwart and sure. Daring defiance, playful and pure. Risen, transfigured, claimed as God's choice, richly engendered, lift every voice. Risen, transfigured, claimed as God's choice, richly engendered, lift every voice. Queerly beloved, valiant and bold, Stirred by youth's vision, dreamt wisdom of old. By Mary's melt at the shoe speed of grace. Stones once rejected, set firmly in place. Risen, transfigured, claimed as God's choice. Richly engendered, lift every voice. Risen, transfigured, claimed as God's choice, richly engendered, lift every voice. Queerly beloved, the table's prepared, finest of wine, of bread to be shared. First through Christ's blessed, that zest of new day, all are invited to feast and to play. Risen, transfigured, claimed as God's choice, richly engendered, lift every voice. Risen, transfigured, claimed as God's choice, richly engendered, lift every voice. Risen, transfigured, claimed as God's choice, richly engendered, lift every voice. Risen, transfigured, claimed as God's choice, richly engendered, lift every voice. The one and only. <laughs> we give it up for our quartet once more. And Ed Moran, thank you. Queerly beloved and incredible hymn. We now invite um, our next uh, poet. Uh, we have an embarrassment of riches here at LAPC. <laughs> and we have an amazing poet, Elvis Alves, one of our deacons. Come on up. Hello, everyone. It's Hi, great to Elvis. be here with you. Um, <laughs> What is the sun made of? Everything that floats in its face, black skin that reflects its rays, home, native land, a dream fulfilled at last. Whatever it needs to feed on, 
grow with hotness, not just any hotness, a will of its own, never sweetness. Everything that floats in the face before dying, before coming alive, recyclables, dust, heavenly things, totally self-made, everything that calls it home, my native land, the land where I was born but did not grow up in, distant countries, regions waiting to be reached like my native land. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elvis. After both Clara and Elvis's poems, I think we just need some snaps. Can we get some snaps? Go ahead, go ahead. Amen. Beloved, I'm um, going to say a few thank yous, then I'll give us some instructions on how we will end our time together. We want to say thank you to each and every one of you who has taken time out of your day to come and celebrate these flags for us to dedicate them. I want to wish all of you a happy, happy pride. We are so blessed to have all of you here with us. Yes, let's give it up. I want to say thank you to our young people. The youth of this church were the ones who really started the current iteration of these banners going up, and it is their leadership that we follow today. Can we just give it up for the young people and our youth? Thank you. They were here all of last summer chalking the sidewalk and putting up uh, banners, and we want to say thank you for your leadership. Y'all, there are those who have been behind the scenes designing these flags. I want to make sure that they get a shout out to Allison Cornyn, who's up on the gate right there, to Philip Kellogg, who's out in the street. We appreciate you, Philip. To all of the various committees, the Social Justice Committee, Finance, everyone came together to make sure that these flags went up. Your generous contributions, your generous support of this church you of the community and of our community of faith. We are eternally grateful. And to those who took time out of their schedule to be with us this afternoon, we cannot say enough how blessed we feel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to invite us into a moment of dedication of the flags. I will offer a benediction and then we will hear once more the reprisal of the song that we heard earlier today. Give me one moment. If you don't mind putting your hands to the sky and raising them towards our flag. God of great wonder and strength, we dedicate these flags. We dedicate these flags to what they represent love and justice. We pray that as people walk by, they will know that there is a community that is not afraid, not afraid to be on the side of justice, not afraid to speak out against white supremacy in an anti-black world, not afraid to speak up and affirm the beauty and diversity of your creation. May people walk by these flags and be affirmed, O oh God. May people walk by these flags and feel loved and seen. May your love guide our feet and guide our stride towards justice forever. Amen. Amen. And may all of us in this space feel God's presence and love now and forevermore. May God forever bring prosperity and love to your households. May God light a fire of justice in your soul. May you remember today you are a part of a community that wants to see all of God's creation whole and affirmed. God bless you now and forevermore. Amen. Begin today, taking the world.
love.